Hi folks, I'm here today to talk to you about Cisco Packet Tracer and in particular 7.3. So if you haven't seen Packet Tracer before or if you're new to it, it's essentially a network design and simulation and monitoring tool that you can use for networking, computer networks that is, um, cyber security and Internet of Things. So it's actually, believe it or not, Cisco Packet Tracer is free now. You will need to go to the Cisco Packet Tracer site, and I've popped up the link up here, netacad.com, and it's available, as you can see, on Mac, which I'm using here today. It's also on Windows, on Linux, and I've also got my phone here, my iPhone, and you can see that it's actually available on mobile devices now, so you can have lots of fun with it on different devices. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to really just explore the interface, and um, particularly 7.3. There are some kind of new little little things that you should get to know um, if you're going to be spending some time with Packet Tracer. So, I'm going to kind of just walk through a quick example here today. So, essentially, let's, let's get started, and I'm going to talk to you first about this logical view that we're in at the moment. So, in order to add things to Packet Tracer. We literally just come down here and you can see we've got network devices, we've got end devices, we've got even components. And as Packet Tracer has developed, they've added more and more various different devices and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and I'm going to add in a first, for example, a router. Um, I can pop it here in my topology. I can go in and I can add, for example, switches. So, for example, I might add a layer 3 switch, so don't worry about too much about the, the, the terminology just yet. Um, and also, let's add an access layer switch. And also, what I can do is I can add an end device here, a PC. And from here, I can actually start to cable up these devices. So I can click on this little connection symbol and I can start to actually use these cables. Now, if I'm not sure on the cables, and this is a copper straight through, um, I could use this little uh, this connection button that looks like an uh, electricity bolt. You can use that to automatically cable up, but what I like with this is it gives you flexibility with the copper straight through to actually choose the port and then choose the switch port. So I'm just gonna choose any port here to connect up. And you can see that on the PC it goes green straight away and on the switch it's just going through a couple of different steps. And um, maybe I'll come back and talk about that those steps it's going through another day. But essentially then I need to use a crossover cable between two switches. And um, so I'm gonna connect here to gigabit 01 over to gigabit and we can choose 101 in this case, so many gigabit ethernet ports on this layer three switch. And what's interesting about this switch is that um, it won't go, this won't, this, these ports won't come up at the moment. And one of the reasons why it won't come up is with this by default, you actually have to add in manually a power source. So you can see here, you've got an AC power supply. You actually have to drag this in. Once I drag this in, I'll give it a little bit of time, but we actually should see these going from this red or down state into a green state. Okay, so it might take a minute or two to, to actually do that. Now you can see it's going through the process and that will eventually hopefully turn to green. Um, lastly, what we can do is we can cable up from our multi-layer switch okay, to our router. Now what we'll see with this one, this because router's default states for the ports are shut down, this won't come up until I actually go in and start configuring my router. So that's a security principle that by design, so essentially they're, they're, they're not gonna come up. So while that's happening, you can see, um, and this is just about to go green very shortly, there's also another view that I'd like to show you because at the moment we're in what's called logical view. But what's great about Packet Tracer is if you haven't had any experience with hands-on real equipment, you can actually go into this physical view. And this will bring you into kind of a city-wide city view. And if you click on that, you can go then into an office view click on that you can see then I can actually there's my PC one in this case and you can see it actually we've got a, what's called a rack view and in this rack view we can see here's our equipment that we've actually added um, 
to our topology. And you can see in this case, there's our rack. I can I can zoom out if, if, I, if I like to see all of the, the pieces in the rack, or I can zoom back in. So I can see in this case, I've got my switch, I've got my multi-layer switch, I've got my router, for example, and I've also got power, a uh, distribution power um, up here at the top to power my various different devices. And what's really nice about this is we can get to our for example, if I click on the switch, I can change, for example. So again, if I wanted to change that, if I wanted to say this is switch zero or switch one, okay, I could also give it a host name here. I can do that. And once I click on the X, it will actually change. So it's actually updated that immediately. If I wanted to change my multi-layer switch and call it something else, I could indeed go back to the config and I could call this multi-layer switch maybe two. And essentially I could close that and you can see it's updated here if I wanted to change my router. Okay, I can even believe it or not, if I'm if I'd like to get more experience with this physical view, I can actually go in here and choose. So if I wanted to add, let's say for example, another switch, let's say another access switch, for example, I can go here and I can literally click on that and in goes my switch. So once I click on that switch, maybe I call this switch two, for example, you can see it's still booting up, so I can't get to um, the prompt just yet, I have to wait until it boots. So if I wanted to, I could wait and I can now go switch two, for example. And you can actually add, believe it or not, PCs to this design. So for example, if I click on here at the PC, um, so my devices, and click PC, I can literally just click here. And what this will do is, if I scroll down, you can see I've added a PC here, okay? So once, if I want to then connect, believe it or not, to this, um, to, for example, let's say I want to connect to my new Switch 2 in this case, I can actually do it phys from physical mode. So I could click on the, the end devices and the connections, I could go straight through, click on my PC, click Fast Ethernet, and then what I will do is I'll click on Switch 2. And then Switch 2 will ask me what port you want to connect to. So in this case, I'm going to say Fast Ethernet 01. So you can see, actually, when I've added that, it's added the connection in there. So that's pretty cool. And if I hover over it, I can see exactly my configuration. So I can see in this case, I'm in fast Ethernet one. Also, I can see if I hover over and switch one, I can see where it's going, um, where it's what port it is and where it's going to. And likewise with the multi-layer switch. Now, as I, as I do this more in physical mode, I can also go back to my logical view and I can see that this is added in. Now again, I might need to move this across here and just drag this to where I want it. And perhaps you can see at the moment, switch one and switch two, they don't have a connection. Now I can either do it from logical view or I could go back to physical view where I could literally go and say, okay, I'd like to connect up between maybe gigabit ports here. So I'm gonna select gigabit zero two and maybe i'm going to connect down to my switch two and let's connect this into gigabit zero one so once i do that you're going to see then these two connections once i go back to logical view there comes back my connections that are now connected up so just looking at this diagram now so that's if you like the difference between logical and physical view and um, so the best idea or best advice i'd say is play around with that um but let's now modify some basic um, packet tracer preferences. So at the moment, in physical view, I could hover over and I could see the ports. But what I like to see is, you can do that by hovering over the devices here as well. You can see what devices, so I can see gigabit zero one, you can see is in an up state, for example. But I'd like to see on the screen exactly what ports are going from PC one into this switch and from PC two into this switch. So what I can actually do is I can go up to packet tracer um, and I can click on preferences. And what I can do is I can click on this little button called Always Show Port Labels in the logical view. And what I like about this is it shows exactly where the cables are going into between the switches. And I always leave that on when I'm configuring any devices. Now, if you're on a Windows PC, there'll be options and preferences, okay? But just have a look around for this. And I'd, I'd say explore these options. And again, don't be shy to actually try various different things out. You can add, for example, the, the the exact models of the various different switches. So you can see this is an ISR, Integrated Services Router. And um, you can see in this case, it's a 2960 switch, but sometimes it can get a little bit um, too much text on the screen. So, but I like to just keep the, the port label shown. 
Um, so also, if, for example, if you're very new to this and you want to say, well, I'd like to see traffic flowing across this network, how do I do that? Well, in actual fact, it's very, very simple. What we can do is we can go into PC1, go to desktop, and I can simply just go into IP configuration. And we can give a static IP address, so I could put this on the 192.168.1, and we'll, let's say this is the 10. Um, I've just picked that randomly. I'm going to use a slash 24 subnet mask or 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. And so that's 10. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my friend here, PC2, and I'm going to pop this guy on the same network, the 192.168.1. Let's call him 11 and give him the same subnet mask. So this guy is going to be 192.168.1.11, whereas PC1 is going to be 192.168.1.10. So they're both on this 192.168.1 network that's signified by this subnet mask. So this first 24 bits and the last section is the host part. So now what we can do is we can actually create a basically now that we've put an IP address or we put some basic device configuration in we can simply add a simple PDU by clicking this little envelope and from here I can go from here to here and what will happen is essentially I'll be able to send a message. Now if you do that it looks like nothing's happened and that, be, that can come, become frustrated. But if we look down the right hand corner, we can see we've got a real time mode and a simulation mode. Now at the moment we're in real time mode and in order to see if that was actually successful, what we actually need to do is we need to click down here in the right hand corner, we can see this little arrow. If I click on that, I get all of the options and you can see in this case, the, the source from PC1 to PC2 and it was an ICMP, so this is uh, essentially a ping message you can see that this, the status of that was successful. So indeed, if I try that again, from PC1 to PC2, we should see another successful message. So this all looks good. Um, now, if I wanted to go one step more detailed, I could go into, for example, simulation mode, where I could actually dig into the details of this. Now, what I like to do before I go into these simulations, I like to get rid of those uh, tests that I've done previously and click into simulation and you'll get an extra simulation panel that will come up. And what I like about this is you can now select from PC1 to PC2 and what you can actually do is you can step through it. So at the moment it's getting ready to set up this ICMP message that's going to go from PC1 to PC2. So what I can actually do is I can click on here, I can play it automatically or I can step through this one stage at a time. And you can see at the moment, we're kind of like in this pause state. So what I can do is I can press play once and I can see my message going across from PC1 up to my first switch one. And in this, we can actually click on this. And this is called the PDU, if you like. Uh, this is called a PDU, a protocol data unit. And what we're seeing here is the seven layer OSI model. And what we, what we notice here is that we can see, in this case, the first two layers, because again, switches and these access layer switches, these work at layer one and layer two. And we can actually, as we delve into this, we can actually see the inbound message. So this again, this is the frame coming into the switch, and we can also see the outbound but with the inbound, we can see that the protocol that has been used here, layer two, or the data link layer in OSI speak, it's Ethernet two. We can see some details about, first of all, the source MAC address. So that's my PC one going to the destination address. And that has to be, in this case, PC two. And we can then go through the layers. So this is going up into layer three now. We've got IP. This is inside our IP packet. And again, we can see now our source IP and our destination IP. And on top of this IP message, what we can see encapsulated is our ICMP message. So this is our what's called our echo request. And if we press play again, what we'll be able to see, we'll close that down for a moment, we'll see going across from switch one to switch two. And again, if we want to dig into that, we can see get the envelope inbound and outbound. And we can basically then, oh, just added that there. We can click on here, it goes to PC2. What's PC2 gonna do? It's gonna reply to this. It's gonna send an echo uh, response or an echo reply. So now what's gonna happen is if I press on this and dig into this, it's gonna show us um, the message coming back now, and I've just 
need to just um, move this out so we can see it again and just make that a nice bit bigger. In the inbound, we can see actually, if I dig into this, now I can see the coming from the source address, so that's PC2, now going to the destination address. So again, this is, in this case, this is gonna be PC1. And if I keep pressing play on this, I now can basically, I can see that this has been successful. So I can see that my little small test network between these two switches, obviously I've got a multi-layer switch and a router here, but between, it, it's only needed to pass from and literally across this local area network from PC1 to PC2 and I can see my status is successful. Okay, I hope this has been uh, useful for you. If you do find these videos um, useful, please subscribe and um, I'll be sure to put up some videos in the near future. Thanks for watching and talk soon.